like Atomic Orange. Uh, I always liked Corvettes. My dad always had Corvettes growing up. Um, so I was around them all my life. I always liked them and appreciated them. And I, you know, at one point I wanted to get one. I looked at them over the years and came close to pulling the trigger on a few, but never, you know, never quite made the connection far enough to really want it over another car. And, but I always loved that color. And I always liked C6s. Um, I always liked that body style because it was uh, it was a big redesign. It was you know a really nice car when I was growing up in my younger my early twenties. Um, so I saw Ford buy that. I was like, man, that Atomic Orange is sweet. It's an auto car, which I had thought about. Uh, and then he and I were just talking like in passing, I think, and he mentioned, yeah, you know, I might sell it. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna come down tomorrow and look at it. So. I went and looked at it, I brought my kid uh, because he was really into the last car. He liked the Mustang a lot. And we both looked at it and I was like, what do you think? And he's like, yeah, we should get it. So it was a stock LS3. It was literally a stock Corvette with a turbo on it when I got it. Um, it had like a very basic fuel setup and it ran, everybody knows that car. It ran its ass off for making, it made 640 when I took it to Taylor. It made 640 on that dyno. I didn't change anything from it when I bought it. That's what it made. Um, and for that, making 640 horse at the tire, like, I mean, it ran really good. So then of course I took it to Texas. I ran a few cars down there and I was racing a thousand horsepower GT500, which was really cool. Cause I was like, I specifically picked that car out, went to that guy, didn't like pester him, but I was like, Hey man, I used to have one that, you know, ran pretty good. I'd love to run, your car. I had no idea what was done to the car. Then he's like, oh, it's a built motor with a 3-4 Whipple. And I'm like, ooh, uh, I might have bit off more than I could chew. <laughs> so we went and ran. Great race. We're like door to door. I'm pulling off on him up top. And then the car, it starts billowing smoke out of the hood. I pulled over. Um, there's cooling everywhere. Like I was like, okay, blue head gasket for sure. That was the thought. Got it back here. Didn't even really look at it yet. Took it to Troy. I think Ritter was with me and we were all like, just get a short block for it. Like, don't even worry about it. Like who cares what's going on with the motor? If it's even hurt, you wanted to build a motor for it, just get a short block. And it just spiraled out of control from there. Um, so yeah, anyway, that, that was the story on this car specifically. But, um, as everybody knows, you know, Speedy passed away last summer, um, from COVID and, and, I'll be honest, like that, that hit me pretty hard. I've lost friends and family members and stuff, but that, that affected me. Um, and I remember like I went, I found out, I went for a ride on my bike that night and like was just kind of thinking about him and like laughing about like memories and stuff and everything, stuff that we got into. Cause we'd go to like Bowling Green, like, you know, those meets or whatever. And we, I'd troll people with him and I got to see like how that worked. It was pretty cool. Um, and then I started thinking about, you know, the next car, cause I had thought I had a really nice car and I modified it. I felt bad like cutting that car up and modifying it as extensively as I did. So I was like, I kind of want to buy a higher mileage car and it's not quite showroom shape. I wanted to buy something that I could really justify as a project. Um, so I was looking at Mustangs, I was looking at C6s too. And then again, I started talking to Ford and then I thought about, man, I need to buy a Corvette. Like Speedy's gone. He would have thought that's so cool. We used to have conversations about your Mustang's awesome. It's a stick car and it makes good power. It runs good. He's like, it's great, but it's heavy. Um, it's not very aerodynamic. He's like, you know, you ever want a street car that's going to really run well, you should, you should get a vet. So we had that conversation and it never left my head. I thought really hard about it and then I, I settled on on uh, Corvette and I thought when I bought the car, I was like, I don't really want to do a vanity plate for it. I've had vanity plates for cars in the past, but then the more I thought about it, I was like, if I do anything, it's going to be something like in his honor, in Speedy's memory. So I came up, came up with that. It was available and I, and I got it. I first met Speedy at a meet at Bumpus and I had seen him around but I didn't know really anything about him. I didn't know what he drove or anything like that. He was pretty quiet if he didn't know you. Um, but he'd walk around, look at everything. And um, I knew Marcus pretty well and Dykus. 
and Marcus was talking about, oh yeah, that's Speedy's uh, Corvette over there. And I was like, oh, that's cool. It was a C5Z. Um, and it was a nice looking car. And then Marcus was like, yeah, that ain't nothing compared to his other car. And then we started talking about his truck and I got more interested and I was like, oh, okay, cool. I'm gonna go introduce myself. And he'd already, like he, uh, like I said, he was kind of quiet, like making his way through the parking lot, figuring out who, who was there and what cars were there. But he already knew who I was. He knew what I drove and had seen some of the videos and that was my Shelby, I think at that time. And um, then we started talking about his truck and racing and everything. And he's, oh, it's just a, just a little old, you know, a uh, little old uh, farm truck. Uh, he's like, it's just a street car, there ain't nothing to it. And then uh, everybody else was laughing and like, yeah, okay. And then we got to talking about some times where they went out of town to race and um, how nasty that truck was, because he lined up with cars that should have beat him. But if anybody knew Speedy, they knew he was really good at hustling. Um, so yeah, that was the first time I really interacted with him, probably about 2016, I'd say. Um, other than that, it was just like seeing him in passing. And then um, we exchanged numbers and like, we would, he would reach out to me and call me. And you know, that's uh, one of the things I probably regret quite a bit uh, in life really, is that I didn't pick that phone up every single time he called me because I knew it would be a lengthy conversation, but I'd get a lot out of it. And I always loved hearing him talk and he'd get so excited talking about cars. And he helped me actually move from uh, tires I was running on my Mustang into like the ET Street R's, which ended up working a lot better. I think he talked to, to uh, Ritter about that too. Um, but it, it was always like, it always made me smile when I saw that come up on my phone because I'd look at my phone and said, speedy LS7 truck. Like that's how I saved him my phone. He did call me one time, he had raced, uh, we had all gone back to Nashville. He had stayed because he wanted to hustle a couple uh, like Hellcats, it was that Mopar, whatever thing that they had, the Mo party. And then he called me later that night when I was already back in Murfreesboro and he's like, man, we got a hold of a couple challengers. We gave him hell. <laughs> he, he was the quintessential hot rodder. Um, like, the example of, of what an old school hot rodder was. Um, yeah. Uh, next to the car is probably front suspension. Um, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit. Uh, I don't really have a lot of plans to make more power. It's making exactly where I, what I wanted uh, to begin with, like what I set out to get. It's at this point, we're kind of holding the car back. Like it, it's overbuilt. Um, so I'm really happy with the setup. It's more now just, you know, cleaning it up, um, working on suspension in the front. And that's really it. Cause I mean, if you know Corvettes, they don't really need a whole lot in the rear. Um, just like, uh, I think probably Viking shocks in the front. So weight transfer is really good. I'll dig race it. Yeah. Yeah. When I sort out the suspension on it and, and kind of get that dialed in with the help of some people, I'll, I'll, I'll dig race it. Yeah. hundred percent. On the street, I won't really go on the track, but I'll, I'll go on the street, yeah. Absolutely, I always told people that. I'm like, I don't dig race my Shelby because I know my limitations. I've probably dig race more than 90% of the people in the group, but I'm not an idiot. I'm not gonna take a high horsepower stick car to race a lower horsepower auto car and lose on the street. I'm not doing that. So now that I do have an auto car, uh, Ford proved this car can no prep pretty damn well. Uh, when it was making 640, it ran really good at Crossville, so. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'll dig race it. Of course, I always love roll racing. It's just, it's a lot more simplistic. Uh, it doesn't require as much setup. But uh, lately, the roll race meets that we've been to, we've noticed there's a lot of dicking around before you race. So, I think, um, just like that video I shared earlier in the week, I think the car scene around here is going to start going back to smaller groups, like more close knit invite only stuff. If you want to race, I have no problem with going to a big meet, but I'm not going to race there. It's too chaotic. Um, but yeah, smaller meets, more intimate setting. I mean, again, that's another speedy thing. You know, he wouldn't race unless it was with the right people. So another thing that, that uh, Jeff and I had talked about was, 
we would like to do first it was speedy then we lost randy tobit and uh that again that one hit me pretty hard too because randy and i had a conversation just weeks before that um and i remember asking him you know asking him how he was doing and he was always pretty good hearted about it and he was like oh you know i'm still here like you know i'm doing pretty good and then uh, a few weeks later he was gone so both of those guys uh, were real car guys at heart. I think everyone would agree. Uh, both saw the earth, great guys. We would like to do um, at least one meet a year, an annual thing in honor of both of them, probably at a track. We've talked about you know venues, where we'd host it, what time of the year. There's a lot of speculation and, and it's kind of up in the air at this point, but I think as early as 2023, we're going to put something together um, for those guys in, in their memory. Catch me on the street in 2023.